Hey everybody, good afternoon. Um, this is Everett. I go to Wayne State and I'm trying something new. I think that it's kind of like a new idea. Um, just kind of came to me uh, this morning, sort of. Um, we have a chemical engineering 2800 test. It's materials and energy balances and this is the first test. It's on chapters 1 through 4. And uh, this is a sample exam that the teacher gave out and he solved it during class and stuff and this might be redundant or whatever, some people might find it boring or something like that, but I figured why not do this for the class and if uh, they have any suggestions on, on um, what I could do to better the way I'm doing the problem or a different way of doing it, um, you know, that would be a good thing. So I'm going to post this problem and how I solved it, A, B, C, D, E, and F, you know, it'll be in parts, I'll put part one, part two, I'll label it right. And I'll send, I'm going to send an email out uh, to you, you guys at Wayne. And then, you know, maybe you guys will like this. Maybe you won't. I don't know. So uh, this is Everett again, and here we go. So we've been view, zooming in on this problem for a little bit here. Um, hopefully you guys have read it. Um, if it's not readable, I'll read it right now. It says 100 kilograms an hour of wet wood containing 15% water is to be dried to a moisture content of 7% with the air. The drying air entering the dryer with the wood must have no less than 2% water in order to prevent cracking of the wood during the drying. The air leaving the dryer contains 6% water. Since the fresh outside air contains only half percent water, a portion of the exiting air is recycled back to join the fresh air stream so that the mixed air entering the dryer is sufficiently moist. Now, the first, like letter A, is draw a diagram of this drying process. Since the air must be heated before entering the dryer, where would you put the heater? Explain. Now, um, this is the dryer here that I put here. Um, this little symbol for the H is where I personally would have put the heater. Um, this is a whole system. So we have stream one, two, three, stream four, stream five. I'm sorry, that's stream six. Stream five, stream six. Stream 7. Okay. Now, um, it says in the problem that 100 kilograms an hour is going in to this dryer to get dried. So, mass 1 total is 100 kilograms per hour of wet wood. Notice it's wet wood, not just wood, like dry wood, because it's got water in it. Um, and that's the point of putting it through the dryer. So we have M water of stream 1 equals 15 m1, 0.15 m1, m wood 1 equals 0.85 m1. So um, this is the structure of how I chose to write down and describe these streams. It makes more sense to me instead of like x or y or a or b or c like the book does it. And I'm not trying to knock Dr. Sally, Sally or anything, but this is just how I found the, the best way to do it was so you know when you're looking at the variable it's not just a variable like you have a picture of it what it means in your mind so it, it seems better to me but you know whatever um, so it says that the woods going in and it's got 15% water it's dried to a moisture content of 7% with the air so it goes in and that means that when the wood comes back out it's has 7% moisture and 93% wood. So this stream beco becomes that, that stream is that. Then it says, the drying air entering the dryer with the wood must have no less than 2% water in order to prevent cracking of the wood during the drying. Now initially I started screwing up the problem um, because uh, the 2% there, um, it looks like it should be a stream and stuff and it's not, it's superfluous information. So. Um, the air leaving the dryer contains 6% water, so we know this, that the air leaving the dryer has 6% water. So notice I said 0 0.06 of M5 has M water 5, right? So you can look at that, and, and it's the same structure as, as this stream up here, same structure. We just know mass 1, but we don't know mass 5 over it this way. So, uh, we know that much. 
And we know that the composition of the air, the actual composition of it, is not going to change. Um, so we can write the same composition because imagine it's just a different, imagine it's like exhaust coming out of a car and if you were to weld another pipe onto, like this is how um, Kurt described it to me as, because I was confused about it for a minute. So say you got an exhaust pipe and little gases are coming out, okay? Now, this is gonna have a composition of A, B, and C. A, B, and C are gonna be inside here. This is A, B, and C is inside that pipe. Now, if I cut a hole in this pipe, and I say, okay, I wanna divert some of it back this way and put it back in here. Now, if you look, that's kinda like what's happening here. So I have a pipe, and it's coming back to join this fresh air stream. It's still going to have A, B, and C in it. It's not gonna change. So um, unless there's some kind of chemical reaction or something that's gonna happen, that's not gonna be any different. So anyway, um, um, yeah, so I wrote that down. Now we don't know much about the recycle stream at all which is this. This is the recycle stream because this air is being recycled back into the dryer. And we don't know much about this except um, that there's a heater there and, and that's really about it right now. So this is mostly the air and this is mostly the wood. This has water in it and this has water in it. So um, come over here and um, it says on the problem here to do a degree of freedom analysis of the whole system. So the whole system um, is the outside of the system, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong because I'll need to correct my problem. <laughs> but um, this would be the whole system, something like this. This is the whole system. So wherever that dotted line is at, Whatever comes, what whatever stream is coming out of that dotted line that I just drew around this whole picture here, that's what you're worried about. So we're worried about the wet wood coming in, the fresh air, the air leaving, and the wood with the water in it leaving also. So we're only worried about stream four, stream six, stream two, and stream one for right now. For right now. All right now. You can write, so this is this picture here. I drew a dotted line around the whole thing. There's a bunch of crap happening in here, the recycle stream and whatever, but there's stream one, two, four, and six. So you can write uh, an equation um, to relate the overall total mass balance. And basically, in equals out. Always, because mass can't be created or destroyed. This is a, uh, some kind of law. <laughs> um, and so you can write an overall equation here saying that since this is in, this must be out, that 1 plus 2, mass 1 plus mass 2, is equal to mass 4 plus mass 6. The next part of it is, well, what are these streams exactly composed of when they're added together? Because this one has wood and water and air. This one has wood, water, and air. So there's wood, or water, wood, and air. Just like the ABC thing I drew up on the board a couple seconds ago. So we have the water here. Um, and how much of stream one is composed of water? Well, it told us in the problem that 15% uh, was. So 0.15 and so on. I'm not going to describe every single variable, but this is uh, one, stream one, stream two, stream four, and stream six. Only for water though. Only for water. Now for the wood, I have 85 going in, stream one, and 93 leaving in stream four. So That's only for wood. So, and only for air is uh, this and this, okay? So, uh, thank you to Kurt. He showed me, um, I'm sure we've all taken 
differential equations and matrix algebra. And inside that class, we were taught how to do um, uh, Gauss uh, theorem or whatever. It was something to do with um, Rho-reduced echelon form. Uh, and if you have um, an 89, um, I'll show you how to do it on an 89. I don't have um, a, uh, I don't have a uh, 83, where a lot of people might have like an 83, but um, I'll show you guys how to do it. <sighs> trying to get the glare right here. Okay, there we go. Sweet. Now, um, the above here is the answer to the actual problem, but I'll show you guys how to get the answer to those streams, okay? So you press apps, which is this purple key right here. Press apps. You go to, let me see if I can find it here. It's um, data matrix editor, okay? It looks like that, all right? Now, press enter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my current one, but if you have a new one, you just let, give it a variable name, and then when it says main, you're gonna wanna say um, matrix because it'll say like list or something like that. You don't want to do that. This isn't statistics, this is, you know, engineering. So you go to the matrix uh, in the main folder and then you save it. And what's important to know here is that for however many equations that you have, however many equations you have, so we have four equations, one, two, three, and four, okay, relating everything about the system overall in stream one, two, four, and six. Now, they gave us mass one. Mass one is known, okay? So we can start solving for things by hand or use our calculator like I'm getting ready to show you how to do. But there's something to know that the stuff here in parentheses that I drew is actually the same thing as the overall because this, everything added up, is overall what's going in and coming out. So what's this uh, one, two, four, and six are composed of is water, wood, and air. So we have three equations. We know M1, but we don't know M2, we don't know M4, and we don't know M6. Those three equations, and we have three unknowns. That means the degree of freedom is zero because three equations minus three unknowns equals zero. And this number right here is degrees of freedom. If we have zero degrees of freedom, that is a good thing that this problem can be solved. So, um, what's going to happen is that labeling and your notation is very important. So when you get to the screen right here, you'll be able to easily know what numbers go where. So there's three equations, one, two, three, but there's always gonna be one more column than the number of equations present. So you have three equations, you're gonna have four columns. Okay, so uh, basically I rewrote those equations that I had written down, all right, and you line up the ones, the twos, the fours, and the sixes in columns. So this is one, two, four, and six, all right? So then we have, what we're going to do is since we know the, the value for M1, it's 100. We're just going to plug that in there right now, and then um, we'll have um, the fourth column will be this answer. So this is the fourth column, okay, 15, 85, and 0. We, you can set the last equation equal to 0 because there's no M1 in it. So you just set it equal to 0, okay? So you move um, um, things over, you move your values over, to isolate your your constants are going to equal the stuff with variables attached now okay this is your answer column which will be last column in the calculator so this is your answer column this will be the last column in your calculator so this will be column number four this will be column number one column number two and column number three all right so go ahead and you put in all these values all right so what happens there is um, 
negative 